Cuba, revolution, perseverance, determination. This journey began with an idea to travel the route taken by Che and his soldiers after declaring victory, taking us from Santa Clara to Havana by foot. Good morning, good morning, and day one of five days of running. Um, yeah, I uh, didn't sleep all too much, but hey, who cares? Um, the sleep will get there. I start early, trying to beat the heat and the humidity. Just getting it going. So we're taking it nice and easy. One step at a time. It's the small towns here in Cuba's countryside that capture my attention, reminding me of many in the American heartland. We're passing through the town of Esperanza. See the railroad tracks down below. It's Saturday but it doesn't seem it's Saturday like we know it. Everybody still seems to be up early, off to work, because that's what people do. Over two mornings, I run just over 70 miles. It's after a second night of no sleep and limited food and resources that doubt begins to creep in. Falling asleep. Now you're falling asleep. Do you want me to walk with you for a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Kara, travel friend and running crew extraordinaire. She joins me as I contemplate the future. We're gonna continue for a little bit longer and I'll make an executive call. So I've been thinking, we came here to see the Cuban countryside. That much we have. Yep. I'm also concerned that if we walk around for another four days, we're gonna miss out on some serious epicness that is just as much Cuba as this is. So, I'm coming to terms with that. And I honestly think I'm more than okay with that because you know what? Plans change. I spend the next few miles solo, trying to push myself forward. Even with a refreshing stop for Guarapo, sugarcane juice, each step feels like a chore. The extreme Caribbean sun haunts above. I'm battling, if I were to stop calling it not failure, but remembering that there's learning in all of it, and that it ends up being a different trip with the same purpose. That's all. It seems fitting that the first stop on our new adventure, while still making our way from Santa Clara to Havana, is at a local historic cemetery. Mira, esto es una familia. This is a family. Ahora la familia entierren allí y ponen los huesos aquí. una persona. Sí. Y una persona allá. Y flores. Y flores. Ahora. We mourn the journey that had been planned while stepping into another. Here we see the burial place of Jose Antonio Echeverria, 
the leader of the DRE, a student-run opposition group formed an alliance with the goals of the revolution. March 13, 1957. The rebels, along with members of the student organization, raid the Havana Presidential Palace, attempting to kill dictator Batista. Meanwhile, Jose Antonio and his colleagues infiltrate Radio Relo, where they interrupt a popular national radio program announcing Batista's assassination. There's one problem. While reaching the dictator's second floor office, the plan at the presidential palace failed. Batista had escaped. In less than three minutes, Jose Antonio delivers a speech that gives the country hope and optimism. But it costs him his life. Shortly thereafter, both sides start taking heavy fire out on the streets as a battle rages between the rebels and the police. Jose Antonio rests as a national hero. With a history as rich as Cuba's, the country is filled with numerous anecdotes and stories of courage, bravery, and passion. It's also a country filled with good-hearted, kind, and generous people working to get by day in and day out. Meet Amara and Raul, our hosts in the countryside city of Cologne. Built in 1920, Raul explains how the house has passed down through generations of his family, and how he's worked hard to restore it to its original state. Working hard to keep this house original. You do. Even when they fix it up. Great job. <laughs> Colón is the center of the uh, important it's an important center for the industry of the sugar cane. Maybe 10 to 12 uh, uh, factory for the sugar cane. Really? Yes, yes, yes. Now there are only four. What Raul explains goes to the heart of the original conflict between the U.S. and Cuba. Only months after officially recognizing the new Cuban government under Fidel Castro, the U.S. government, concerned by Castro's moves towards the Soviet communists, begins devoting resources to overthrowing the new dictator. Castro, aware of these coup plans, moves to nationalize many industries, including sugarcane production, which was highly funded and subsidized by both the U.S. government and American-owned businesses. President Eisenhower, in return, moves to enforce the first embargo against Cuba, meant to severely damage the country's economy. Today, factories have shuttered, markets shifted, jobs are gone, and what remains is mostly automated. Left behind are many small towns facing challenges not too much different than those across the American heartland. We bond over shared stories. Spend the afternoon wandering town. And keep our adventure moving. There's a location off-limits 
to most Cuban citizens unless given special permission, and the permitted are only allowed to enter for work. With Yadir not allowed through a checkpoint, we hire a taxi, a 1950s pink convertible. What could be more Cuban? Okay, yeah, maybe a cigar, but we haven't gotten to that part of the series yet. This is Veradero, an incredible strip of crystal clear Gulf Coast beach line, consistently ranked as one of the top beach destinations in the world. The warm sands and seaside breezes invite us to stop and take in the moment. We enjoy the tropical coastline and all its beauty. Sometimes, when you least expect it, you meet a fellow adventurer. I run half marathon, a marathon too. And 10 kilometers, how much? Oh, what about now? 45 minutes. 45 minutes? Yeah. Si. I have 30 minutes, 18 seconds. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Leave it to runners to find each other and immediately start comparing notes. What time do you have in marathon? Oh, uh, <laughs> best time. my best? Yes. Three hours, 17 minutes. I have three hours. A new friend who shares similar interests. Or Kara, enjoying one of her favorite songs on the beach. When even in the most foreign of places, it's reassuring how a little slice of home finds its way to travel right along with you. What a wild and crazy adventure. Have you ever taken on an epic adventure? One that you could see your desired endpoint at, but in the midst of its execution, maybe it didn't turn out exactly as you thought. Maybe midstream, you had to change tactics, try something else. Maybe you had to give up entirely and say, tomorrow's a new day, I'll try again. Let me know in the comments down below. I would absolutely love to hear those stories. And please, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing by tapping that button down below and hitting the bell for notifications. Maybe you'll even give this video a like. And thank you for spending just a little bit of time with me here today, for sharing this experience together. Until next time, keep dreaming, keep doing, and keep exploring the luxury of adventure.